this morning. Praise the Lord forever. Well, welcome to the Fort Myers Rescue Mission Mission Service. We are here to tell you about the mission and have some of our guys to speak for us today. And Brother Ledger is going to tell you some exciting things about our new dining hall facility. And so we're looking, looking for a tremendous service this morning. Now, let's stand for prayer. Praise the Lord forever. Brother Plank, you lead us in prayer. Yes. And those that have come into the mission, Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that it presents to us. We thank you for your goodness and grace, oh God, that's changed lives down across the years and still happening. And so we pray today as we hear things that yes. yes. give us information, but it inspire us to support the mission and to glorify God. And for what you do, Lord, in this service, we give you praise. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, let's get a song book as Brother Glick comes. Amen. Number 644. 644. I just think we need to go on to sing Onward Christian Soldiers. Amen. Thank God for what he's done for this mission for so many years. And this song just, I just felt like we had a lift it taste. 644. Do your very best as we sing this together. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ the royal master leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Verse number three. Like a mighty army, who's a church of God, Christians we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we, one in hope and
as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before then 469 I will serve thee because I love thee you have given life Jesus Christ reaches across the centuries of time just for us this morning. Praise God. And for the mission. Praise the Lord. He still reaches people that are out in the byways and the highways of sin and brings them unto him. I appreciated that good message last night on the cross. People have forgotten to preach on the cross anymore. And we need to hear that message. We need to hear that. Thank you, Brother Fuller, for that. And we certainly appreciate it. Well, back to the service this morning. We have with us this morning the chairman of the board of the Fort Myers Rescue Mission, Brother Harry Plank, and he is going to come and just give us a few words. I told him to speak just about 10 minutes, not preacher's 10 minutes, regular 10 minutes. Em emphasis, emphasis on few words. But what a privilege, what a privilege to be at Fort Myers. I've actually had some input or contact with Fort Myers from the earliest days. I can remember when Robert Walker was in a house, and of course it developed from there and come all the way around to what we have here. But when Brother Wooten asked me about speaking just a few minutes, guys, I thought of an Old Testament passage that makes mention of what they called the city of refuge. There were six of them, Kadesh, Shechem, Bezer, Kurjath, Arba, Ramoth, Golan best I can do. And I thought if they'd had a chance, if they'd had a chance, they would have added Fort Myers. Fort Myers, because surely the mission has always been a place where a guy in trouble could run to, could run to. It could be a refuge to him. Old Testament. 
and it's still that way. But then I thought also of the New Testament of an account where there was a guy uh, where the Bible says in Mark chapter 2, verse 4, that Jesus came into Capernaum, and it was noised about that he was in the house. The house filled up, and there was a guy that needed to go there to see Jesus, but he was a palsied man. And because he was a palsied man, he needed a friend, and he got four of them. And I thought they were Robert Walker, George Schaefer, David Light, and Marjo Wooten. And those four guys came, and they brought, they brought, brought the palsied man, which could have been me. From all appearances, it could have been some of you. And they brought him to Jesus. And in bringing him to Jesus, they used both conventional and unconventional, which is typical of Fort Myers. They'll do anything, almost, to get you guys to Jesus. Even to the tearing up of the roof. And, and they brought him to Jesus. And the neat thing about that, in my closing comments about Fort Myers Rescue Mission, is that when they did get him to Jesus, and that's what it's all about here at Fort Myers, when they got him to Jesus, Jesus saw him and said, said uh, uh, to him, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And you know what? That's what Fort Myers is still all about. It deals with the sin question. And so when you bring it, and you're good at it, but you're sick of it, Jesus can look at you and say, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee, and it'll be the greatest day of your life. What a privilege to be at Fort Myers and work with these good guys, good guys mostly, uh, but uh, what a privilege to be with you, you fellows. It is a joy to be here with you today, and thank you, Fort Myers, that you've kept true to the mission of Walker and Schaefer and Light and Marjo Wooten. Throw Pat Wooten in there, too. Five of them. They can get you to Jesus. It can be done. Thank you, Brother Plank. You always have some interesting things to say. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Brother and Sister Glick are going to sing for us. Are right, you going to sing the song I requested, or are you going to wait and do that one Okay, good. All right, they're going to sing for us. All right, well, I don't do this real often, once in a while, but uh, there's a song that's on my heart, and uh, I do this with guitar. It's not because I'm a great guitar player, but I like to play a little bit. Brother McCoy, doesn't he do a great job? I tell you, I just enjoy uh, hearing him and just watching him play all those different chords. He needs to teach me a little bit while I'm here, I think. But uh, this song says God uses ordinary people to accomplish exceptional things. And I believe that, you know. God wants to use every single one of us if we're available for what, something in the kingdom of God. And guys, even if you're not right with God, I'm glad he can get you all fixed up, get you saved, and then you can be a blessing to other people in a powerful way. So I hope this will minister to you. And maybe it's even mainly for some of the staff here that just feel like, oh, what can I, you know, they, they get discouraged once in a while probably. But God uses, or now I'm just so ordinary, I think where I came from and had wonderful parents, wonderful family. In fact, uh, Ray and Ruby Troyer are uh, living part-time in Sarasota. They came back down to visit me with a couple of their uh, fellows that they watched there. And uh, they know where I was raised and how ordinary things were there. but. You know what? If we're available to God, it's just amazing. I've been so amazed and thank God so many times for all the privileges I've enjoyed. Well, I'm not supposed to speak. We've already heard from Brother Paul, the chairman of the board there, so uh, I need to sing, right? Maybe. Anyway. God uses ordinary people to accomplish exceptional things. Just make yourself available at his feet to lay all things through him are possible. God can do just anything. For God uses ordinary people to accomplish exceptional things. You need not be a hero, nor one ranked high in fame, to do something.
some work for Jesus and glorify his name. Your all just give to Jesus, your life he then will bless. For God uses ordinary people to help those in distress. God uses ordinary people to accomplish exceptional things. Just make yourself available at his feet to lay everything. All things through him are possible. God can do just anything. For God uses ordinary people to accomplish exceptional things. The Lord just needs some people who will give him full bless and make them fruitful. He'll help them reach lost souls. Believe God for some miracles. Place your all in his big hand. For God uses ordinary people, those who move at his command. God uses ordinary people to accomplish exceptional things. Just make yourself available at his feet to lay everything. All things through him are possible. God can do just anything. For God uses ordinary people to accomplish exceptional things. All things through him are possible. God can do just anything. do that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, when I came to the Fort Myers Rescue Mission several years ago, um, I always try to, you know, ask the Lord to give some kind of verse and to help us out, you know, when you get like, you're, like you have your life's verse. And when you get in difficult times, you can look back at that life's verse and you can thank the Lord and it gives you a boost and it pushes you along and helps you get over that hump until finally things get where they need to be. And when we came this direction, I asked the Lord to give us something. And the Lord gave me this verse in Matthew chapter 11. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And it seems like sometimes, you know, the enemy comes along, he wants to press you and grind you down. And I go right back to that last one, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, Jesus said. And that's just exactly the way it's been for us. Praise God forever. And we appreciate the Lord. I, I just marvel every day at what he does for us and how he helps us to see so many things accomplished. Uh, just a few things that I wanted to kind of highlight, and then I'm going to step down let Brother Ledger take over the service after that. But... This last year, we had the memorial service for Brother Robert Walker. Uh, Brother uh, Plank has already made mention of Brother Walker. Now, I didn't know him very well, just two or three times. And the last time he and his wife came to visit, he asked me, he said, uh, I have one wish that I would like to fulfill. And I said, and what is that? He said, I would like to preach one more time. Now, he was on canes and on his little scooter riding around. And so I said, okay. I said, we'll see what we can do to arrange that for you. And so we gave him the next service, the next preaching service. Now, I thought, you know, he was kind of getting to the place where he was repeating himself and would ask you a question several times and try to get an answer from you several times. And, uh, and so I thought, well, maybe he would be able to, to preach to us for about 10 or 15 minutes, maybe, you know. But he made it up on the platform, and when he got up here, he hammered away at us for 45 minutes. And I mean, just <laughs> preached and preached like a house of fire. And that was good. I mean, he preached just exactly what the men needed to hear, and I'm sure the kind of message he preached years ago 
when he was here. And so we had the, the pleasure of having a memorial service for Reverend Robert Walker here at the mission this last June. And then, of course, Brother and Sister Ledger, we pushed out so that they could go on deputation this last year, and they went into a lot of churches and were able to make a lot of contact with people out there. Our goal is to try to reach new people to reach out into new areas, new churches, and help the folks out there to know who we are. Um, and so that's what our, our purpose and our plan is. And so I've been trying to push them out, you know, go out there and, and hammer in the woods and, and wherever and see if you can drum up some new people. And we did get some new churches, and they've gotten into some new churches, and we appreciate that. And some of you preachers that are here, some of you board members, if you have churches and preachers that you know that maybe you would like for the mission to come and be represented, presented at. Uh, please, by all means, give us or Brother Ledger a call, and we'll, we'll be scheduling. He'll be scheduling this year um, for April and first part of May, and uh, they'll be going to the Missionary Convention at Penn View, and then from there I'd see in other places. And so give them, give them somebody's name. Give them a, a phone number. Call the preacher and tell him, hey, they're going to call you. Now, I found the preachers are very diligent, not diligent, about returning phone calls and telling you whether you can come or not, you know. And shame on them, shame on them. That's something you ought to tell Brother Plank to do at IHC, tell the, the preachers. You ought to be diligent about returning calls for missionaries and evangelists and what have you. Wouldn't that be a good thing? You remember, you remind him of that, will you, Sister Plank? Anyway, we, we appreciate them going out and covering things for us. And then we're further along on our dining hall facility. We're so excited about that. Uh, we're further along than we ever have been, and Brother Ledger is going to tell you more about that. We did have a groundbreaking. Uh, we had five gold shovels, and uh, I have, still have two of them. I don't know where the other three went. I think some of the board members took them. But we had Brother David Light, who came down and uh, preached the um, dedication service for us. And then uh, Brother Paul Stetler and his wife, Jacinda, came over with the Hobestown Quartet and sang for us. And then we went back and broke ground, and we had a wonderful, wonderful service. And we certainly appreciate how the Lord helped us there. And then we have several of our men uh, more than I've ever seen that have stepped up and begun to uh, really closely walk with the Lord. And you're going to hear them today and their testimonies. And I'm, I'm really excited about them. I'm telling you, I'm just so thrilled that God is helping us to see some of our men, some of our young men especially, that are walking close to the Lord and are seeking Him in, for deeper walk and what have you. And so we, we thank the Lord for that. And it's only because God is helping us. Not anything Brother Ledger or Jerome or I are doing. It's just what God's doing. And God is working mighty work. Praise God forever. And so we appreciate how the Lord is helping us. And so I asked Brother and Sister Glick to sing a song for me this morning. When I was a kid, I went to church. Um, we used to sing this song as a congregational number. And then a couple of times, you know, some of the teenagers in the church would get together and sing this song. Haven't heard it nor thought about it for many, many years. But this morning when I woke up, I was praying and talking to the Lord. And the Lord reminded me of the song. Now, I can't quote it to you uh, because I'm not that bright anymore. But I can tell you one thing. When I'm by myself and the Lord brings something to me, I can sing it through the whole song without the music, without the words. And I can, I can just go right at it. And then when I get over here, I can't remember it. Now, I know the title, Jesus Used Me. And I, I contacted Brother Glick and asked him if they knew the song. And he said yes. And so they consented to sing it for us this morning. And we certainly, we certainly appreciate Brother and Sister Glick at the last minute hopping on the bandwagon and helping us out. Praise God. You sing for us. What's interesting about that? What's interesting? Can you hear? Is this on? It just doesn't sound like it up here. I guess this is a dead spot. But it's interesting. He texted me that. But... Uh, my wife had already been thinking about singing this song. Maybe we should sing this song. Isn't that something? So uh, we hope we can do it justice. I know it's our testimony. It says, Jesus, use me. Lord, don't refuse me, for surely there's a work that I can do. Praise God. I 
see thee on the cross of Calvary. O Lord, I cry, let me thy servant be. Jesus, use me, and O Lord, don't refuse me, for surely there's a work that I can do. And even though it's humble, help my will to crumble. Though the cost be great, I'll work for you. I'll stand for you, dear Jesus, though death may come my way. I'll spread the gospel to a fallen race. And if it be thy will, Lord, to go across the sea, Lord, help me to be willing to say yes. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning. my coming King. Oh, Jesus, use me, and oh, Lord, don't refuse me, for surely there's a work that I can do. And even though it's humble, help my will. song. I love that. Yes, so it's, um, all right, we're going to have Brother Ledger to come, and he's going to present to you some interesting things, facts and figures, and introduce you to some people that are here. Praise the Lord, Brother Ledger. Amen. Well, the Lord is good, and His mercy endureth forever. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. You know, only in God's economy would the Bithlow, Florida drunk, Reverend Robert Walker, get a hold of a heroin drunkard from New York City, George Schaefer, who would get a hold of a hippie named Ledger Do you ever notice it? Every single person who surrendered to Christ looks back, and then they point back, and they point back, and they point back, until Christ is glorified. In Jeremiah 6.16, there's a, I'm ringing a little bit. Can you stop my ring? Appreciate that. In Jeremiah 6.16, he talks about the old path. And I think that is an important theme of Fort Myers Rescue Mission. 
When I came to the rescue mission in 1979, 41 years ago, they were still on the old path. When I came back from Mongolia in 2009, they were still on the old path. We're still on the old path. Amen. I think that's important because it's the only path that works. <laughs> so I wanted to introduce to you some of the fellas that have come down and found Jesus along the way. You know, I'm one of those that my friends carried in to see Jesus because I was so paralyzed in sin I didn't know what to do. But I appreciate how God has just been bringing them one by one by one through the mission. And this is probably one of the biggest groups of guys that we've ever had here that's still here. Because oftentimes when people find Christ here they move on. They go on to become useful in society and return to their families. And, and, but some, a few, God has called to be here and help us. And so uh, I'd like them one by one to come this morning and just give us a word of testimony about Jesus. Because that's the one we want to glorify and honor in our lives. So Brother Stephen Short has been the chief cook and supply getter at Fort Myers Rescue Mission for a while. <laughs> been here 10 years. And I just appreciate him so, the way that God has helped him to have an infinite amount of patience <laughs> with fellow workers at the Fort Myers Rescue Mission Dining Hall. Brother Stephen, why don't you come testify, please? Well, good morning. It's good to be here. Amen. I'm trying to think how many times I've been here at the mission service, but I came here 10 years ago as a backslidden Christian. I uh, had moved back to Florida. My wife had died, and I had uh, gotten out of fellowship with other believers, and I was just lost. And uh, after being here for a year, my money was running out, and my family said, come back over with Tampa, to Tampa, stay with us. Friends, I'll give you a floor of our house. And I had been not minding God for a while, and I wanted to mind God again because I had had for years a close relationship with the Lord. And when you know the Lord, you serve the Lord, and been in the center of His will for your life, there's no other way, really, you know? When you know that and you don't have it, you know what you're missing. So I started looking at options for my life and seeking the Lord and what to do. And I found out that the Fort Myers Rescue Mission was here, and I uh, started investigating it. I called and I talked to Sister Light once, or twice, really, and... I thought about coming here, but it was scary. It was like, am I, do I really want to do this? This is crazy, a homeless shelter, you know? I don't know anything about it. And the more I sought the Lord in it, and the more I thought, you know, I knew that it was the thing to do. My family and friends thought I was crazy, you know? They had places for me, and they couldn't understand why I would go to a homeless shelter and not come to them. They were just, like, befuddled by it. But I wanted to do what the Lord wanted me to do. So I girded up my loins, and I packed up my apartment. My brother came and got my stuff and my furniture, and I came to the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. And the first morning I came, I took a cab and came in here, ate breakfast, and they didn't have any beds. So I had met some other guys at uh, breakfast, and they said, well, we'll go over here in the woods and sleep and come back tomorrow morning. And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> So my brother called me that night and said, did you get in? I said, no. I said, I'm with some other guys who were over here sleeping in the woods. He said, I'm getting in my car. I'll be right down to pick you up. I said, no. I said, you remember how when we were kids, we used to camp out at night? 
I, you know, and he said, yeah, I said, that, that's what it is. <laughs> and so the next day he said he talked to his wife, and she could, they couldn't believe how much peace I had about it. But each of you that know the Lord and serve the Lord know that when you're in God's perfect will for your life, you have perfect peace about life, you know? So I came here, and I, I think I did pots and pans for uh, three days. Then nobody was here for doing the, we used to have a, not a counter, but a pie table. And I did that for two weeks because uh, both of those guys had quit. And they said, well, you know how to cook? And I said, well, I know how to cook. But when I went in there and saw how am I going to fix all these meals with two ovens, you know, <laughs> it was like, okay, you got to figure all this out. But, you know, my uh, first scripture I ever memorized was Psalms 31. It's like, for I say you are my God. I trust in you, O Lord. My times are in your hands. And I know that the Lord didn't give me anything to do that he wasn't going to equip me and help me to do. So I became the dining hall manager, and I I cooked on uh, on the weekends. And probably about three or four years ago, Brother Wooten said, "I just want I want you to do something else too." He said, "I want you to just manage the dining hall, but don't cook, and I want you to be the purchasing agent." So, I do a lot of running around. You know, I do ordering for all the chemicals and all the supplies and all the food, and I, I take Daniel to Lowe's a couple times a week and other things, whatever we need here, uh, I go and get or I order, and you know, it's wonderful to be a part of other lives here. The lives that you see God working on and changing. And sometimes you think, they're never going to get it. And then you start seeing growth. And, you know, it's encouraging. And it's a privilege to be here and be a part of people's lives that God is working on. And I'm grateful to the Lord for the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Amen. 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 Thank you. Stephen. Um, Brother Joe Rusi has been with us for four years, and he's been a driver, uh, works for us driving, and uh, just recently he's had an interesting experience, and I thought I'd give him a chance to give us a few words about how the Lord's helping him. Amen. Amen. Well, I've got more than a few. Uh, Hopefully (laughs) I can finish before the hook comes over here and pulls me off. And this is a testimony, and it's about giving thanks. It's not a sermon, but uh, I'm going to give some context to this, you know, uh, like a lot of sermons do. And I'm going to draw on a story that really had a strong emotional impact on me. And it's about a group of Ohio families in 1847. They got in their wagons, and they headed west to the golden land of California. And... uh, Along the way, they encountered many difficulties. Uh, you know, the, the weather, sickness, uh, Indians, etc. And they were in the middle of the New Mexican desert, and they were ready to give up. It's 100 degrees, and um, they're wearing the heavy woolen clothing that would have been normal in Ohio, but was really bad for the desert. They're ready to turn back. They're ready to give up on their dream, and the <clears throat> patriarch of the group the leader says, let me go over this sand rim and look for food and water. So he goes over, and <laughs> this is fiction, okay, this is fiction. He goes over, but it had a strong impact on me, and, I, and I'm saying it to make a point. Uh, he goes over the rim, and he sees telephone wires. This is 1847. And he sees a highway, an asphalt highway, and this monster thing is coming right down at him and he leaps out of the way and injures himself to avoid getting killed and he stumbles down the road to uh, a gas station diner, highway diner, and uh, kind people, a husband and wife are running it and they are very kind and they invite him in. They think he's like a deluded crazy guy who's been in the heat too long and uh, and they're going to call a doctor, they call a doctor to come and tend to his injuries. And he sees a calendar on the wall, and on the calendar is a, a watercolor sort of thing of Conestoga and wagons. And it's like, that's me, that's us. And he sees the date, and it's 1961, which I'll return to 1961. And he collapses. So the, the doctor shows up, and as he's resting in the residential party, 
finds some encyclopedias and he goes through them and he discovers that indeed this is 1961 and he finds his son in the encyclopedia and his son is dying back in the wagon, dying with fever. And his son became a medical scientist and saved many, many lives in California. So he, uh, the doctor shows up with penicillin. He grabbed the, you know, this will, will, he grabs the penicillin, runs out, police show up to help him, but they chase him over the rim. And of course, when he goes over the rim, he disappears back into 1847 where he saves his son's life and his son goes on to achieve great things. And uh, what, and this sounds like something that might be a little reader's, it's a Twilight Zone episode from 1961. Uh, but it really, and Dale Robbins, or Cliff Robinson played the guy, but uh, it really hit me strong emotionally because it, it, it indulged my fantasy of having an overriding, compelling, righteous pur purpose uh -huh. in life. And we all thirst for that, but it's not so easy to come by. So it was like candy for that fantasy. It's, it's not real. Uh, at all, but an emotional impact. And, you know, I, I've tried to live my own version of finding meaning through my life, uh, I, you know, my own American dream. I uh, was brought up in the 60s. I watched TV. I found meaning and purpose through the TV uh, to uh, be cool, to have nice material possessions, to be attractive to women, be successful, all of that. Uh, fast forward to my high school years. Uh, Joey, fast forward. Okay, all right. Okay, the point, the point is that, uh, well, we'll fast forward to 2005. And I'm living what I think is a very solid life. I, have a successful business, I've accumulated a little wealth, I've got my dream home, I've got a wife I love, three children. In a few short years, it all disappears. I thought that was as solid as it could be, but obviously it's shifting sands. Back then, my theme song would have been Frank Sinatra singing, I did it my way. Now, I'm anchored in Jesus. It's all all these things that are classic American values, it's shifting sand as solid as it seems. So I thank God for bringing me here and giving me an anchor in Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Joe. And now I'm going to ask uh, Judd Vaughn if he'd come up and give us a word of testimony. He's been a resident two and a half years. Um, he works full time as a demolition expert. <laughs> but uh, here at the mission, he's helping us build up. And uh, does serve as a grill man sometimes, but uh, uh, mainly we just appreciate how God has changed his life and we'd like him to give us a word of testimony. Thank you. Morning. I can't get over the fact that I'm not nervous. I just seriously, if I told you a couple years ago that I'd be speaking in front of a bunch of people, you just you wouldn't have believed me. You know, I thought about it this morning, and the Lord said, "Perfect love transcends death and pushes out fear." You know, and just the last couple years, the realization of how much He loves me and how much He loves us, the depth of which He loves us, it just break it breaks your heart. You know, I mean, I've. I've been here two and a half years, and I want everybody to know this right now spiritually as we speak. This moment that I'm going through, I talked to the brother last night after the service that uh, I'm going through something special. He's got different plans for me. You know, I didn't know until the last couple years when I relapsed and I had to go back to the farm in Pennsylvania. He had, he had something different, you know? He wanted all of me. I want everything and I want nothing. That's it. And all the fear and all the doubt and all the disbelief, it just left. And everybody here, every resident here who I know, everybody knows me. And you, the guys know that I know you. You know, this has been a special journey for me. Praise God. It's brought Christ into my life. I know that we have souls. I know we're going somewhere else. 
This is not about cheeseburgers. This is about love yeah. and grace and yes. peace yes. and hope. Yes. And Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Yes. And he has to be at the core. Right. He's got to be the core of our lives. He has to be that power source that we go to every day forever. And that's it. And I thank him for that. Good. And I thank you guys. I love you guys so much. Same. It's just it's a blessing to be here to wake up every morning and you're around people that love you and help guide you through the day. And I just thank the Lord for that. Praise and I got a couple things I just want to say. I brought some notes. I came prepared. So this is just, you know, I asked him. I'm like, what should I talk about? He just tell them truth that got you through the storm. You know, be honest. I was like, how am I supposed to do that? He's like, you don't have to do it. That's half the point. You don't have to do it. He'll do it through you. Yes, Just give him the keys. I can't do it. I know you can't do it. <laughs> you were never supposed to do it. I'll do it through you. And that's, it's amazing when you break through that, when you pierce that, that part of the human condition, that's when the, the grace and the love, and it's just, it's amazing. So it, for personally, for me, I thank God when church is never over. I never leave the spiritual realm. That feeling for people that are unbelievers or that are not at a spiritual crossroads that I thank God that, you know, I run to church. I bring church with me. You know, when Christ is inside you, you don't have to wait until the sermon's over. Thank God I get to get out of church. I take church with me everywhere I go. I take Christ everywhere I go. And whether I'm eating, whether I'm sleeping, whether I'm sharing fellowship with the brethren, it just never leaves you. You want to do spiritual things. You start shifting away from things that are carnal, things that are primitive, things that have no meaning, right. things that are based around love and right. hope and light and peace. And I thank God for that. But for those that aren't at this moment, that's okay. I've had to learn as far as humbling myself. We're all at a different season in our lives, for better or worse, and that's okay. Because I, I was in that season as well. Until you let me in, chain yourself to my high tower. I've just been thinking about high tower and lighthouse lately. Uh, Psalms 18 says, the Lord is my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust forever, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. You know, and for people that are struggling, as I was, and that are at sea, to just have this faith that his love, he never takes his eye off of us. Ever. Ever. That day will never come, you know, and if you're, you're at sea and... You know, chain yourself to the Bible, chain yourself to Scripture, to His Tower, to people that are believers, to people that are godly. Right. You have to make this shift in this primitive world right. towards things that are spiritual. You know, unless you can make the break, it's not going to happen. It just will not happen. We're spirits, we're souls. His Spirit wants to work within us. Amen. You have to come to the end of primitive things. Right. It just has to happen. So there's that. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Shall I be saved by all my enemies? I love you forever, and I will ever. Right. Just, it just, it just, I can't get over how much he loves us. Just that peace that he provides within. It's just such a beautiful thing. I just love him. Thank the Lord daily. Thank him hourly. Thank him every single day for his love, for his guidance. You know, it's amazing because it doesn't, I had to come to the realization, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to wake up and do a two-hour sermon. Just every little thing throughout the day. Just thank him. Thank him for grace. Thank him for peace. Thank him for oxygen. Thank you for arms. Thank you. If you don't know how to pray, just thank him for anything. He knows that you love him. You know, he has to know that. He loves you. It's a, it's a reciprocated relationship. He wants you to love him. And I thank him for that. Humble yourself daily. Tell him, okay, tell him you can't do this. I do this often, like every day. You know, it's just, you come to that realization, Father, I can't do this. I can't do it. He knows. He knows you can't do it. And just humble yourself and say, I can't do it. And he just says, my child, I know. It's over. I love you anyway, you know, and you can do it together. And this one for me, slowly turn away from Delilah. You know, I, Samson and Delilah, I thought they were cartoon characters. I, mean, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know, you know. <laughs> like Dungeons and Dragons as a kid, I didn't know. Yeah, right. Turn away from Delilah, slowly move said. back away from the serpent. Slowly. You know, and this one for me, I try to tell guys that are young, whether they're living in sin or not, it, it's not, I had to learn this. I mean, my trip's been like six, seven years, and it's not, you can't live a life of sin, you know, and live an ungodly life and when it's, it's just enveloped in darkness, and then say, okay, I'm done sinning, I want God, it's over. It's not. You have to, you know, you look at sin, you look at the serpent, Delilah, whether it's a seductive spirit or not, and you have to back up slowly. 
It has to be slow. I have to remind myself of this. My parents just accepted Christ in their life a month ago, and I thank God for that, but I have to humble myself. I want them to be where I'm at now, and it doesn't work that way. It has to be a slow process. It's eternal. This is not a 48-hour fix. This is forever. And I just, uh, that was one thing that helped me. Scripture, prayer, meditation every day. I don't care if you work. Work is great. He has to come first. He has to come first. Christ has to come before work, before your mother, before your kids, before your father. He has to be the core of your life. And I just, I thank him for this. I took up a little bit too much time, but I'm sorry. Uh, then again, I just, I just thank everybody here. I love you guys very much, and it's just, it's been a profound journey. Thank you. Amen. Thank the Lord. Well. Uh, okay, that's yours. That's yours. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Judd, for giving us a word of praise and testimony. And now I'd like to ask Joe Perez if he'd come. He's been uh, here about four years, I believe. Is that correct? Four years? Yeah. And uh, he's been serving as Darm Captain. And uh, that has been probably the trial of his entire <laughs> spiritual life. And I can, I can, having slept in Darm 1, Bed 1, and when I first came to the rescue mission, I understand a little bit about that. So we're asking him to come and give us a word of testimony right now. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Who this right is for? I just don't know what to say. I have so much to say. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. That was good. That was good. I could talk all day about Jesus Christ. That's um, that's what it's all about in my. Call me. I was in silence care. I was Baker active. Um, I'm an ex-cop. I'm a martial artist all my life. I've been a soldier. I love combat. I dream of combat. I love to fight. The reason why I say that is because my side of my shit, when I was growing up in New York City, we got beat down a lot. So I wasn't trying to be a bully. I was trying to let you know it's not going to happen. You can talk all you want. I know what I got to do. But I fight for freedom. I fight for justice. I fight to help the sisters on the street don't get robbed, don't get mugged. It's not about having gangs and stuff like that. We just learn how to fight, and you have to learn how to fight. When I learned the gospel later on, that came to my life, the gospel, it, it was something that, I, that I, I yearned for and I wanted, but I wasn't ready. I was doing other things, trying to get to a place to be a good man, to be a good cop, to be a good son, to be a good father, and through all that, as my world kept tumbling down uh -huh. and crushing, and I had that big smile, and I lost my children, and lost my wife, and lost my family, everybody dying on me for certain situations or other. And, and here, God gave me the opportunity to, to train the academy in Puerto Rico for six, seven years, maybe 20, 30,000 police officers had a chance to go to the military and try to be a man. And there was always, there was always that emptiness inside right. of me. I'm around a lot of people and going to the parties and, and be around all these beautiful ladies, praise the Lord, but there was always that emptiness. There was always something that wasn't there. There was something that, that was missing. And, they, and I knew I was missing the mark somewhere along the line. And people kept talking about how much money they had and, and all these cars and bling, bling, and gold and, and nice houses and nice families. Uh -huh. And I watched how their family would break apart and, and he didn't love her and she didn't love him. And, and asking God, you know, what's going through my mind? Why are you letting me see this? My walk here at the mission was different. After I had to escape one of the police officers that I knew for a long time, I went to 7-Eleven, he brought me here. He said, I know a place we're gonna go. He said, leave everything. Uh, this is all I got. He says, 
You're not going to need that where you're going. Right. I'm going to take you somewhere you can find God. Mm -hmm. And the light is lit up inside my spirit. I want to go somewhere where people don't know me so they won't lift me up or try to um, I was swimming before, trying to suit me up and inflate me that I'm all this and I'm all that. And nobody knew my path. And nobody would give me a word. Thus said the Lord. And that's what I wanted to hear. So the walk has been oh, hard. <laughs> hard to change what was inside of me, things that I've learned that weren't true, that weren't real, that wasn't honest, that was no virtue. It wasn't of God. It was man's wisdom, not God's wisdom. I found myself at crossroads. Sometimes I'd be at the garden. Sometimes I'd be fighting my giants. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm in the fire. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm crying before the Lord. At the garden has sent me. Let it be your will, not my will. Now how do I do this? How do I truly be a good Christian? How come they can have it and I can't have it? Why can't I be happy? Why can't I have that hallelujah? Praise the Lord. I can't live without you, Jesus. You're my everything. I give it all unto you. I can't live without you, God. And that's what I wanted. Yes. To be able to lift my hands in the sanctuary. I came to the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Praise God. And these men of God were on me left and right. Everything I did wrong and everything I did right. You know? <laughs> Sometimes more right than wrong, more wrong than right. But I've learned, Brother Steve helped me a lot in the cafeteria, my character, my attitude. Um, it was hard, it was hard. And the love on me, the discipline also, the stern warnings, the word of God that came flowing, the class you with other people. But it was used to be like this, now I'm like this. Yes. <laughs> but it used to be like this, now I'm like this. It used to be like this, God said, do this. Yes, amen. And that's where my heart is at. Be a servant of the Lord. To be serving, have a chance now to have a prayer service. <coughs> have a chance to moderate a service that's glorious in my life. Had a chance now to be dawn captain and prayed about that for a while. After the man did a good job, he trying to step in because I want the God standing to be here and nothing less than that. And if I can't believe in something that's real up here, then I go with anything. <laughs> if I can't believe there's something that's real and God's standing here, we'll flow with anything. So I said, Lord, I need a scripture. I need something to keep me balanced throughout my whole life. Seek first the kingdom of God. That's it. And this righteousness of all right. these things oh, shall be hiding. And finally, I can yeah. smile. My, come, <laughs> hallelujah. Finally, I can smile. I can say, thank you, Jesus. I'm not fighting them all with everybody. It's time to go. And it's time to go. <laughs> and I just thank God so much in the Four Miles Rescue Mission. And Amen. <laughs> uh -oh. Thank you, Brother Joe. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. Yes. Well, um, Dean Schultheis has been a resident, I think, four years. Is that is that close? Okay, yeah. And uh, he's uh, been just a, a help around here a lot, mainly his famous Saturday morning breakfast. But uh, uh, also, I think the Lord has really uh, changed him. And I'd like him to give us a word of testimony. Yes, amen. Come on, Dean. I, will, I promise there'll be nothing like uh, Joe's speech. Uh, <laughs> much quicker. Uh, as uh, Reverend Wooten always says, uh, I, um, yeah, that would even make a, a Presbyterian stand up and shout. Yeah. Uh, I'm a Presbyterian. <laughs> That's always right. So uh, I uh, come from a different world. Um, wasn't always a good guy. Pretty much the bad guy. And... Uh, but I saved enough money to help my, with my parents, and then my uh, father passed away. And then my mother got ill, and I came here. I wasn't too happy. I don't know anybody that's happy to first, when you first come here to pull in. I mean, you don't have much, if anything. And uh, you're, not, uh, 
you're, you're not a part of anything here in the very beginning. But soon enough, you have to follow all the rules. And as Bob will remind you, there are many. <laughs> and um, you, you've, you start with church, you start with these things, you try to fit in, it just seems overwhelming. And then you get to see Reverend Ledger, and then you get to see uh, Reverend Jerome, and then my boss was uh, Stephen, and uh, they all slowly, like Joe said, beat you up on a daily basis. Uh, then you start to learn, and then you start to open your heart, and then that's the gift. When you open up your heart, and you pray yes. whenever you can, there's sometimes I'm praying 24-7 when I'm walking around. And uh, that's the gift. And now, for the first time in my life, I, th I thoroughly believe I know what love is and uh, joy. I actually have joy. And uh, I'm grateful for the place and all the people here, including Reverend Wooten. Well, I didn't mean it that way. Especially Reverend Wooten. And actually, and uh, I'd also like to thank, I've learned a lot from Bob, but you're, you're brutal. Uh, thank you. Amen. Amen. Brother Steve Lord has been with us for, I don't, I don't know, brother, how long have you been here? Long time. Long time. <laughs> but um, we've just seen a tremendous change in his life in the time we've known him. So ask him to come and give us a word of testimony. <laughs> you need to leave. <laughs> I hope y'all are ex excited about finding out what I'm going to say as I am. <laughs> uh, I really, it's, you know, all these guys have said so much, I feel like I can just say what they said and sit down. Um, I, I don't. I have so much to say, it's hard to say it in few words. So um, I, uh, I've been here, I think, I think I've been here six years. Uh, I came here in September, and by December I was ready to leave. Uh, uh, it's not because of the rules or anything, it was because of the stigma that comes with where I am. Now, I've always look down on homeless people and in my other life and you know I just didn't want to be here because of that uh -huh. um, but then I started I guess God just started working on me I, I Stephen said he was a, a backslid Christian I I was saved when I was 10 years old in 1974 on a Tuesday night and I remember it vividly and got baptized on Sunday and but that was pretty much the end of it. I forgot about God, and I I went on. I wanted to do things my way. Mm -hmm. My dad wanted me to go to college. I wanted to. I wanted. I could go on to any college he. I wanted to, but I wanted to go do my own thing. And now I'm doing my own thing, or I was, until I fell apart on the bus one day, and just gave it all to God. And, you know, whatever. Whatever you want me to do, I do. I came back and talked to Reverend Wooten, and I didn't. I didn't go into details about it, but I'm like, you know, whatever it is God wants me to do, I'll do it. And and I don't know. I'm still not sure what it is, but I have a really good idea that it, He wants me to be here and be a part of whatever is going on here because I'm still here, um, and I'm happier than I've ever been, and I've got less than I've ever had. Um, but if, you know, it's been a hard road, hard road. Uh, and I know all of you, everybody here has been through something. Uh, my downfall was alcohol. I really liked the alcohol. And being in the business I was in, it, you know, I could drink all the time, drink whatever I wanted. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I don't know. I've been moderating a little bit. I, I do some devotions in the afternoon at 5 o'clock, and every once in a while I do devotions in the morning at 8 o'clock for the men here. And 
And uh, it's like I just tell them, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm not perfect. Uh, it's, like, it's like some, there's a lot of people here that, you know, God fine tunes them every day, maybe changes the spark plugs or whatever. He's still got me laid out on the garage floor. <laughs> so, um, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do whatever, whatever he wants me to do. If he wants me to be gone tomorrow, I'll be gone tomorrow. But if he wants me here, um, taking over Reverend Wooten's job. <laughs> that, that, I, I had to get you back. Uh, but I, I'm thankful. I also want to thank, before I, before I go, I want to thank all the, uh, everyone here that supports the mission. Um, there's a lot of people here that appreciate it and don't know how to say thank you or, or just for whatever reason. Uh, but, there's most everybody here appreciates it, and and we we love you and we thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. We appreciate that, brother Jerome. Maybe you'd come and uh, give us a word of testimony for it, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes. Come on. Uh, this has been a blessed day. Yes. Amen. Amen. Brother Wooten's going to lose his position soon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm in the number of the young. So, uh, it's, uh, it's been a blessed day. I thank God for being here this morning. All the things that we hear, all the things that we preach, all the things that we teach concerning Jesus, I've been a recipient of. He has saved me from eternal death. He has delivered me from cancer. I'm, I should say he has healed me from cancer. He has delivered me from a sin-sick world. And he has restored me with my family. All of the things that most of us come to Jesus for, I have received. And I thank God for it. I thank God for it. And now that I've received those things, my relationship with Jesus has not ended. It gets deeper as I go. And uh, Jesus restored my life and my son's life together. We're, we're on talking terms once again. I'm Pop and he's son, and I thank God for it. Uh, we communicate daily. We text and we speak daily. We pray together. When he's with friends and they have an issue, he would call me. He would say, Pop, I got a friend that needs prayer. And I pray for him. I pray for him. And I thank God for that. And I'm getting to introduce Jesus to my son. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. And God has blessed me so. He has blessed me so. This July, I'm going to take a trip to California. And I'm skydiving with my family. My daughter, my son, my son-in-law, my two grandkids. We're going to go 18,000 feet in the air. And we're going to jump. We're going to jump. We're going to jump. I trust. I trust. I trust in Jesus. I trust in Jesus. I trust in Jesus. But, but the Fort Myers Rescue Mission has been a marvelous place for me. Yes. And uh, I've met so many wonderful people. Uh, there's nothing better than the family of God. Uh, I have traveled and, and uh, been around and seen some wonderful things. But uh, my heart is here. My heart is here. I've had opportunities to go on and to do other things. But I feel the Lord has got me here for a reason, and, uh, and the reason is clear. This is my training ground. This is my training ground. The people that come in are my people. I came in the same way they came in, homeless, hopeless, and helpless. But God, thank you so much. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. God bless you. Thank the Lord. Yes. Amen. Well, a little picture of 
Fort Myers Rescue Mission from those that have experienced it. Brother Phil, can I just have two or three minutes? Sure, brother. Okay, you stay right there. Say, uh, you've heard me say I, I started. We started supporting the mission in '84, and '87 uh, is the first time I was here. I've been here many times for days at a time revivals, and had Brother George Schaefer in my home many, many times, and and Brother Phil many times for days at a time does my handiwork around the house. Uh, Brother Jerry, I don't know anything about music, but one of the things I've heard is one of the hardest instruments to play is second fiddle. And uh, uh, God, we've got a wonderful leader here, full confidence in him. I knew George well and all, all the other guys. But friends, the truth is, if you've been around here a while and you've really watched, this mission probably wouldn't exist without Phil Ledger. Right. I've seen him whenever it was, it was very tough for him, hard times here, times whenever the devil wanted to destroy things over the years, and, and he stayed right there, and he's been the, he's been the guy that's kept this thing, uh, vision, envisioned different buildings, uh, and I've watched him when he's been crushed, and, and I want to say, one of the reasons I wanted to come up here is just to say a word to you guys. You know, when you're serving the Lord, there are times that ha things that happen. You say, well, you know, I expected to be treated like that when I, was, when I was out in the world, but here I don't expect that. But this guy over here, for many years, I've watched him in every situation. And uh, Phil, you're my hero, buddy. I met him, I thought, this guy, he's, he's a little bit strange maybe. But he's very brilliant, <laughs> intellectual, and he, he is, he's my hero. I, I thank you for being able to say that. After all that Christ has done for me, what little could I do for him? To God be the glory. Well, it was 34 years ago that this camp meeting was being held in a tent right outside this door. And the people in the tent got it in their minds. They were going to march out on that five acres to the north of us and claim it for Jesus. And they did. And the staff just kind of followed behind them, and they walked around in a big circle and praised God and claimed yeah. it for the Lord. A month of talking to him about that property, God sent the biggest check I ever saw here. $267,000 came in in one check. And we paid off that property, and we had money in the bank to, to develop it. Well, last year, we made a commitment to try to get something done out there. This new dining hall came along. It's not only going to be a dining hall, it's going to be a new clothing room, it's going to be a new uh, laundry room, it's got all kinds of purposes. It's big. It's bigger than I ever thought that God would want to build. But there it is. And we're, the Lord has pulled together a volunteer team. Uh, most of you know our song leader, uh, Dave Brogdon. What you might not know is he was saved here at the camp meeting in Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Now he's a general contractor licensed realtor and a land developer, licensed land developer. He has been in, instrumental in helping us secure this property out here, did all the due diligence for us, did all the homework for us, and now he's helping us with this building. So uh, when Reverend Hatfield was here, he had contacted Olympia Steel and said, uh, well, this is what we want to put up. and. Uh, brought it before the board, and I mean, the price was incredible, just unbelievable what it was going to cost us to do this, and we told Olympia Steel that uh, we just couldn't afford their building. And so we started hunting around locally to try to find something that would work for us, and this dragged on for a year, and one day, Olympia Steel called me back.
I was in Ohio, I think, at the time. And they said, are you guys still looking for a building? So, well, yes. Well, we've just had the most unusual thing happen. This church group has just backed out of a building that's already being built. They've already paid the down payment on it, and they're walking away from it. They said they want a bigger building. And so we have this building for sale for half price. Would you be interested? Well, how big is the building? Well, the one that we had planned to buy was 90 by 100. The one they had for sale was 90 by 98. Two feet smaller. Just one thing. It's a two-story building. Instead of 9,000 square feet, it's 18,000 square feet. Well, we prayed, and the board talked, and the executive board prayed, and we felt like God wanted to go ahead and get the building. And so we paid a down payment on it, and from that day to this, we've been trying to get a permit to set that building up on our new property. It has been an uphill battle from day one. I have heard that in Lee County and Fort Myers is the most difficult place in the country to get permits. I partially believe it. And things were looking well. We had a volunteer architect who came in and has been drawn. He adjusted the building to fit our needs. We had volunteer engineers, civil engineer came in and spent a hundred more, more than a hundred hours on developing this property back here. It's gone on and on and on. And just the other day, uh, we got a word from them. They said, well, the city said that uh, that hole in the ground to the north end of your property may be a wetlands. And if it's a wetlands, then we have to deal with the federal government. And so we're praying that that's not a wetlands. Because that'll set us back another year. And then we had a parking variance come up. They said, oh, you have new property. You need a new parking variance. Now, we have one for this property. We told the city that since most of the residents do not drive cars but have bicycles or walk, we do not need 1.8 parking spaces for every seat in our church. And so they gave us a variance. And so we don't have 100 parking places. We only have about 25. Well, they said, when you get to the new property, you're going to have to do that over again. So we filed for a variance. And just the other day, we got a note from the city. We're sorry to tell you that they did not have a quorum for the variance committee this month. So we're bumping you down the road another month, since they only meet once a month. And this kind of thing has been going on with this property for a long time. Long ago, I said, Lord, this is in your hands. You have got to do it. I really feel like it's going to get done. I just don't know when. <laughs> so we're asking you to pray and ask God to move this thing forward. You walk back there, you'll see that we have, a, uh, we have some dirt on the ground. The Lord had, has uh, already provided that money, and we thank the Lord for that. But we're pretty much stuck now until we get the permits from the city to put up the building. We already have a crew that's willing to come. Mission Helps said they will come and erect the building for us. We already have a cement contractor who's going to pour the cement slab at one half the price that it normally would cost. We found a cement dealer here in town who's going to sell us the cement at two thirds of the normal price. We see God starting to put the pieces together and then uh, just the other day, I got a check in the mail, an anonymous check for $15,000. And with it was a little note that said, buy yourself a backhoe tractor. Well, um, we'd been praying about equipment for this project. We asked the Lord for a pickup truck, and the Lord sent us a 1999 Ford 150 with 350,000 miles on it, 
I don't know how many transmissions it's had, but Dan over here got the thing running right, and we're using it. We needed a golf cart, so the Lord sent two because he knew Brother Wooten would want one too. <laughs> we needed a backhoe tractor, and the check came in, and personally, wow. uh, I am, I am, I'm not one of those people that loves to go out and buy vehicles. I mean, this is not my forte at all. I would have just soon the Lord drove one in the door as to have, have ask us to find one. But I prayed and I said, Lord, you know, we need a backhoe. Where do you want me to go? And the Lord said, stop over to uh, that uh, Kubota tractor company on Palm Beach. And so I walked in the door one morning and the first fellow on the right had an office and he was sitting there uh, drinking his morning coffee and nobody was with him. And uh, he said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I want to buy a tractor. So he invited me in to sit down, and I told him the deal, that we had $15,000, and we needed to buy a backhoe tractor with a front loader on it. And uh, he, said, uh, he said, well, you know, there's, there's nothing here on this lot that's under $30,000. He said, but a fella contacted me a couple of weeks ago from Cape Coral who's downsizing his business, and he has a couple tractors for sale. Why don't we go over there? And he took his time to go over there and talk to this fellow. And sure enough, he had a tractor for sale, and he only wanted $10,000 for it. A real nice New Highland 555, four-wheel drive, big front bucket, came with two, two uh, backhoe buckets. They got ready to load it on the trailer, and the starter died. The old man said, I'm not giving those folks something that's broke. Fix it. I don't know how much he had to pay to get a starter for that big old monster. And then the hydraulic on one side wasn't working, called in a mechanic, had that fixed. Kept working on it till he got it all running right, and they brought it over here and dropped it off. And now we got our tractor. God is taking care of a whole lot of things here and there, and I just feel like he's in this project. I'm encouraged. But I want to be in his timing. Amen? I want to do things his way. And I know that as we begin this project, the Lord's going to send in a lot of people who know how to do construction work. It's happened before. It'll happen again. Amen. Men will come in here. They'll have trades under their belt. They'll know what they're doing. Yes. They'll be able to assist us yes. in building the rescue mission. Now, the dining hall is just the first step. We're also going to build a brand new maintenance department. That'll be a large building with two big garage doors and an area in it for an office and, a, and, a, and possibly even a, 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 some kind of a storage place for, for things that are donated to the mission. That's going to be a, a 40 by 60 building. That'll be 2,400 square feet there. And then we have another plan for a women's shelter that we want to put a little bit to the north of the dining hall. The women's shelter will, will have housing for 30 women with children. And it will be uh, 100 by 90 feet also. But it's going to be a block and stucco with a woodruff building. It has a big courtyard right in the center of it. Beautiful. Well, the guy that designed it used to live here in Fort Myers. He now has his uh, architectural company in Texas. And uh, actually, he drew the plans for the church we're sitting in right now. Donated them to the rescue mission. And he said, well, Brother Ledger, I, I, I'll be glad to help you with the drawings, but I don't live in Fort Myers, so I don't have a license there any longer. So I went to the volunteer architect who's helping us with this building, and I said, Art, have you ever heard of this fella? He said, oh, yeah. He said, I worked with him years ago. Have him send his stuff over. I'll be glad to put my stamp on it. God is moving. At his pace, <laughs> the Lord has been, has been uh, sending in funds for both the women's shelter and for the new dining hall. God has been supplying the need, been coming in. We had a most unusual thing that happened just a week ago. We got a letter from the, vote, from the VA. They said, uh, there's a veteran that has passed away, and he wanted to send you all a check. The check was for $550. And they said, we're going to send the check over to you, but the lady who took care of his funeral would really appreciate it if you would help her with that funeral expense because she took care of it for him. 
And we said, of course, we'll be glad to send the $500 check over to her. And as soon as we got the check from the VA, we sent it on. A week later, we got another letter from the VA. Oh, there's another check here. Uh, they left you, this man left you some money. I'm not going to tell you how much it was, but I'm going to tell you this. It was a big check, and it was a lot more than $500. Now that's a first. We've had a lot of guys that have come through here. Brother Ledger, when I get rich, I'm going to pay the mission back. <laughs> but now it's actually happened. Amen. God is moving. God is using his people. Uh, God is working. I'm convinced that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ever ask or think. Why? Because... We're still on the old paths, folks. We believe in good old-fashioned conversion, where old things are passed away and all things become new. We believe in a holy life and sanctification and getting rid of that old nature. We believe in making restitution and walk in a holy way. That hasn't changed. It's still the same here. Why? Because it is the only thing that works. Many of us have been to prison, been to programs, been through everything there is, been to AA, been to Alcoholics and all of it. There's only one thing that works. The one-step program, surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ and let him rule your life. And things will change forever. And thank God for his wonderful grace. When I came here in 1979, I didn't know a thing about this. I was just a Lutheran kid that had never even heard that I should be born again. But I heard it at the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. I'm so glad I gave my heart to Jesus. I'm so glad he took me on into holiness, for I met a lot of people. <laughs> and grateful and thankful for all he's done for me. And I think that this mission is well worth your support. Amen. Brother Wooden. Now, wasn't that exciting? I thought it was to hear these men tell their experience and how God's brought them. And then to hear the information that Brother Ledger has passed on to us from the building of our new facility. It's an exciting thing to look and see as God moves, God brings everything to pass, and we certainly appreciate it. Just before we go, I want to uh, be sure and say thank you to all of our volunteers. We have a little over 100 volunteers that come here to the mission uh, throughout the week, throughout the month. Some come on a one-time basis, and some come every week that's real steady, and we certainly appreciate every one of them. We have churches that bring work teams in, so some of you pastors, you've got work teams at your church. Come on down. We'd be glad to put your kids to work and teach them some things while you're here with them. And uh, we won't kill them, we promise. We'll just, just help them to be able to see what mission life is all about. And so we thank the Lord for all that. Now, what I want to, you to do is your participation is to be able to reach in your wallet or your checkbook or your purse and write out a big check, take out that big bill, that one you have hidden in that little compartment there that's just for a rainy day it's raining and so you uh, get it out and uh, give the mission an offering it doesn't go to us it goes to the works here what we're trying to do for building this building back here and so we trust the Lord to help us let me get a uh, sister Glick you'll come and play the piano I'd like for you to play that chorus uh, part of the family of God and uh, ushers you come and Pray for us. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all here together. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Yes. We just can't, we just can't imagine how to thank you for everything and uh, everyone that supports the mission and, and everyone that's here. Uh, please bless this, this offering and just we all love you and thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
you for your giving. Let's stand for prayer. Don't forget lunch at noon. I'm sure you won't, but I just want to remind you, don't forget to go over to the dining hall and eat lunch at noon. We appreciate each of you that were here today, and may God certainly richly bless you. Um, and those of you that will be leaving, I know some of you are going to be heading back home here in the next day or two. We, we want to ask God's blessings on you as well, that the Lord will help you, that when you go home, you know, sometimes we're out of sight, out of mind, that somehow, some way, God keeps bringing us to your mind so that you'll keep praying for us. Father, as we bow before you this day, we thank you so much for your loving kindness to us. We thank you, Father, for this blessed service we've been part of. We're thankful, Father, for each one of these men. They've got up and told just a little bit, just a speck of their life and what's brought them here and how you've changed them since they've been here. And, Lord, we pray that you would continue to maneuver their lives for the kingdom. And, Lord, we pray that you would guide them and direct them and show them where they need to go, what they need to do, dear Lord, we pray. Father, we pray for all the people that are here. You know every man, every woman, dear Lord, that's here and has graced our congregation today with their presence. And Lord, we pray that you would move upon their hearts and their lives. Help us, dear Jesus, to surrender to you everything that we have. Father, if they haven't, we pray. We praise you again and thank you in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. 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 Praise God.